This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by HelloFresh. We're back from our brief one-week holiday break, but the news, <laughs> it doesn't take breaks. So I guess we better get you up to speed on some of the things that happened over the last two weeks before we get to the more recent stuff. You're going to want an appetizer before we get into the main course. It's all terrible, though. So, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So maybe just don't eat at all. <laughs> <laughs> maybe just turn us off. <laughs> But don't, because we need the money. Yeah. So, for one thing, Australia spent Christmas continuing to be just on fire. Yes. All while Prime Minister Scott Morrison literally snuck away to enjoy a nice vacation 9,000 kilometers away in Hawaii. Wow. Seems nice. He uh, seems like a real fucking asshole, too. Yeah. Now, scenes like this played out in Australia over the last few weeks, looking like a cross between Mad Max and Silent Hill. And uh, the Australian government still refuses to change its climate policy to reflect the absolute horror show happening outside. But you know what? This is fine. Yeah, we're not really clear on why this dude is prime minister in the first place. But with estimates of at least 24 people dead, 63,000 square kilometers burned, 1,300 houses destroyed, and nearly half a billion animals dead. Well, a lot of Australians, they aren't too pleased with the man in charge at all. So, hmm. Yeah, uh, this was illustrated. It was, it was illustrated beautifully during Morrison's trip to the village of Cabargo, uh, where cameras captured an exhausted firefighter refusing to shake the prime minister's hand. Then a pregnant woman who'd lost everything also refusing to shake his hand unless he gives more funding to the firefighters, which uh, he just to which he just walks away while getting brutally heckled by rightfully pissed off locals. Here you go. You we weren't getting any bites to anybody. You are an idiot. Who we felt people around here? Nobody. No people yeah, yeah, vote. You you're out, out, son. You are out. Good night, you're Nina. See you, mate. Bye. Oh oh, I'm pissed what off. You moron? I don't see Kira Billy burning after the fireworks. Yeah, they uh, they don't like him too much. No, uh, the, he forced a handshake on the one woman. He, yeah, and then just uh, stop trying to shake people's <clears throat> hands. I, I might be misquoting, but I, I guess that uh, he also said to one of the firefighters' uh, friends or coworkers, he was like, "Well, I understand he's probably pretty tired, so uh, I'm sure he didn't mean anything by it." And he was like, "No, he lost his home, and he doesn't like you, and I don't like you either." Yeah. There was another firefighter. Here's, here's another great clip of a firefighter uh, just giving a piece of his mind. You from the media, tell the Prime Minister to go and get from <laughs> Nelligan. Yeah, so good. Uh, you, you love to see it. I love to see people uh, get right, uh, it's a terrible right circum angry. <laughs> terrible circumstance, but they are completely justified in their mm -hmm. extreme anger. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, best of luck to you over in Australia. We, Maybe. we finally sent some firefighters from uh, California and I guess some other states as well. Yeah. Not enough probably, but uh, also... Because yeah, the... California firefighters, they weren't seeing enough fire themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh God, I'm so bored over here in California with no fires. Send yeah. me over somewhere where I can put some out. To be fair, we are experts here. We are. Uh, but uh, yeah, apparently the government in Australia is also like, well, we don't need the help. I think you do. Yeah, I think I you think might. I think you might. I think you, it would be good for you to be like, oh, you want to help? Please. Yes, come on over. Yeah. I yeah. think I think everyone would agree those fires should be uh, put out. It would be a, a, the good thing to do about those fires. Uh -huh. Anyway, speaking of other people who managed to escape our worst people of 2019 list before doing something bad and or weird, just at the tail end of the year, yeah. it looks like we're going to be getting a bizarre Kevin Spacey YouTube video every Christmas Eve for the foreseeable future. I can't believe he did this again. <laughs> the fucking balls of this guy. <laughs> yeah. Now, the disgraced former House of Cards star, of course, does not have much of a career left after being credibly accused of sexual misconduct against a, a whole bunch of people, including some minors. And the last time we'd seen him was Christmas Eve 2018, when he uploaded a monologue in character as House of Cards character Frank Underwood to YouTube. Now, that video, which mostly just confused and repulsed viewers, seemed to simultaneously argue that the Frank Underwood character wasn't actually dead and was innocent of the horrible things viewers watched him do as uh, you would assume an allegory for Spacey himself being innocent. It was very strange. It was a weird and choice. And incoherent. Yeah, it's, it was a weird choice, especially since the character's defining trait was that he was a total sociopath, but uh, okay. I'll get the public back on my side by taking on mm -hmm. my most famous role yes. of a absolutely fucking awful person. Anyways, cut forward, and sure enough, Christmas Eve 2019 brought us another Kevin Spacey YouTube monologue. Santa, I don't want this. This one was slightly less overtly sinister, at least at first, until Spacey talks about responding to attacks by killing them with kindness. A weird choice of words, considering two people have died since accusing Spacey of sexual misconduct, including a guy who died just days after the video went up. 
all these accusers keep dying in suspicious ways. Bit odd. Yeah. And, I think uh, this guy died of like cancer or something, but uh, yeah, I mean, like, I I, I don't believe I'm Kevin sure this, Spacey is arranging for people to die, but no. it also it's a weird like, word choice. If you're dying of cancer, like the fact that uh, this is uh, weighing on you at all times probably isn't helping. Uh, well, the more recent guy killed himself, but oh. not specifically because of the Spacey thing. Oh. Although I couldn't have helped. No, it couldn't have helped. Um, but anyway, uh, what else? Oh yeah, the Pope slapped a lady, and she deserved it. Yeah. I mean, he sort of slapped her, kind of slapped her. It wasn't on the face. It was on the hand. It was on the hand. Yeah. Uh, on New Year's Eve at the Vatican uh, New Year's Eve celebration, <laughs> Pope, Pope Francis was greeting the crowd, and uh, one of his fans, or rather stands, yeah. got a little too excited and uh, grabbed his arm and would not let go. Now, the papa, he got a little mad. He slapped at her hand until she let it go, and he made a very disapproving face while doing so. Uh, it's not the best look for God's chosen representative on earth, but also maybe don't tug on an 83-year-old man's arm. He reacted naturally and was yeah. justified. Yeah. He, and, like, it, it wasn't even really a slap. He was like, you know, no he, one got hurt. He did what he, he needed didn't leave to a do mark. to get her to let go. Yeah. Also, it was, like, reported that he had uh, hurt that wrist before, too. Yeah, he has sciatica. He's an old man. Mm. He is in pain constantly. Don't touch the Pope. Yeah. Well, in any case, the Pope did deliver a tearful apology about the incident the next day that you made him do. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile... Can you put it up on YouTube? <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm so sorry. This is just... Hey, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry about my fucked vibes, guys. But uh, she violated the Pope code. Yeah. So. <laughs> but uh, yeah, meanwhile, like the, the shittiest part about this yeah. is that uh, everyone who didn't actually watch the clip, they just saw a bunch of headlines about the Pope slapping a woman, which is not what fucking happened. You see a headline about the Pope slapping a woman. You're picturing him just open hand slapping a woman in the face guess, for yeah. no reason. That's what um, I pictured Yeah, when I saw it trending. Well, there, have you seen the video of the Pope from, like, years past where he's doing communion and, like, people try to, like, kiss his hand and he just moves it away every time? Yeah. Like, I mean, repeatedly? this guy, he's got the, his fans are the worst. Yeah. Some of them. Some of them are all right. But, yeah. like, the Pope. They're right up there with K-pop stands. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're probably about even. Catholics. Catholics K-pop, K-pop fans. Uh, yeah. You know, if you really want to make some money. <laughs> you got to start a religion. Yeah, That's what Kanye's doing. And Christianity has a foothold in Korea. I don't know about Catholicism, but to the, you want you want some dedicated fans. Yeah. You start a Catholic K-pop group. There you go. The wow. Papas. Anyways, uh, it's a new year, and even though we're less than a week into it, themes things seem to be going pretty good. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait. No, they're not, because... If you just watch TV or listen to the radio or <laughs> gone outside and talked to people, you would realize that uh, we might be adding another war to the collection of wars that we've been uh, waging in the cool. Middle East. Uh, country at war. The Ooh, year 20. Rah. The Roaring Twenties came into speed with another war. <sighs> yeah, oorah. Uh, so, yeah, the relationship between the U.S. and Iran, it hasn't been great for a very, very, very long time. And the exact reasons are impossible to get into here, but... Both countries have legitimate grievances against each other at this point, and, you know, it's a very uh, chicken and egg conflict between both countries with very different ideas about the Middle East. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, Iran is a state sponsor of terrorism Mm -hmm. and insurgency with a terrible human rights record. Yes. And it's tempting and easy to say that they're the bad guys and, well, America, we're the good guys. Mm -hmm. But, like most things, it's obviously more complicated than that. And uh, the real question is, as bad as the Iranian government is, would going to war with them be good for the Iranian people who we claim to care about? Yeah. Or would it be very, very bad for them? Yeah. Uh, reality check. There's a lot of people in Iran. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that don't want to go to war. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of innocent people that will die. And based on our recent track record with wars of liberation. Yeah. Uh, over the last oh, 60 years or so, uh, there are reasons to be skeptical yeah. of whether this would be the right decision to make. Uh, but anyways, to be clear, we are currently not at war with Iran. Yet. There's no World War Three. Yet. Yet. Uh, but we did just assassinate one of Iran's top generals, and uh, it's probably safe to say that this will... Um, Escalate tensions. Iran has said as that opposed to the other way around. There will be retribution. Yeah, uh, you so. generally when that when one country uh, assassinates a high-ranking government official of another country, mm-hmm. things don't just calm down after that. They don't stop being mad at each other. 
<laughs> All right, you got us. Yeah. Uh, anyways, the assassination wasn't just done for no good reason. This guy supplied insurgents in Iraq with bombs that killed a lot of American troops. There is no sugarcoating this. He was a very, very, very bad person. But he was also a high-ranking government official of a foreign country right next door to Iraq. So taking him out in a drone strike has the potential to result in a lot more deaths as things escalate. Hence why a lot of people aren't stoked about this development. But we're not here to analyze this situation. That's not very fun. We're here to talk about Jacob Wall. Oh, thank God. You can get your real hardcore depressing news somewhere else. When we talk about things that are sad, we yeah. either make jokes about it or find something funny to talk about. And Jacob Wall is uh, tangentially related to this. Thank you, Jacob. I was yeah. getting real stressed out this week at the, you know, the prospect of just even more war in the world. Yeah. But uh, thankfully, our good old trusty... Jacob Wall yeah. has, you know, brought some levity to the situation. Yeah, he makes war fun to talk about. Yeah, so yes, we're just days into the new year. Jacob Wall already in the news because despite being a prolific grifter, he's also a patriot. And we actually first covered this over six months ago. But in case you've forgotten, <laughs> Jacob Wall, he really wants to go to war with Iran. Yes. Uh, before being banned from Twitter, he tweeted about this desire multiple times. Uh, at one point, he used his classic coffee shop format to write, Iranian people DM me all the time and tell me that they wish America would bomb their country to help topple their murderous regime. <laughs> okay. Uh, but as easy as it is to call Jacob Wall a chicken hawk, he's actually willing to put his money where his mouth is on this one, telling Daily Beast writer Will Sommer, if we go to war with Iran, I will enlist within 10 days. Cool. Oh, good. Yeah. Asked which branch he would join, he said, probably the army. <laughs> that was back in June, though, when war with Iran was a lot less likely than it is now. But when reached for comment by multiple journalists, Wall reiterated that he fully plans on enlisting, saying that as soon as his current legal matters get resolved, and as soon as we're at actual war, he will enlist. Just got to clear my schedule a little bit. Make sure I'm not a criminal. Tie up some loose ends. Yeah. <laughs> got to gotta slander a couple more politicians. I'm under the uh, impression that he is fully in uh, control of Jack Berkman's Twitter account now, too. That's the Based theory. Based on everything that's uh, been posted over the past couple of days. I don't days. think Jack Berkman knows how to use a computer. Yeah. That would, wouldn't put it past him. Uh, but yeah, of course, you know, that little legal matter that he mentioned there might make things a bit more complicated. Because Wool is currently facing felony charges for allegedly illegally selling securities back in 2016 when he was 19 years old, before he landed on our radar with all his political stunts. So he can't join up until the case is concluded. And if he does, in fact, get slapped with a felony, he'll first have to serve his sentencing, including parole. After that, his chances still aren't great because the military considers felony convictions to be a bit of a red flag for applicants. And so there usually, you go. usually doesn't uh, means you're not not getting in. If there's a draft, all you have to do is scam rich people out of millions of dollars and then go to jail for it. Oh, well, I guess you can't go. And then well, you better in jail than over in Iran fighting a war that you don't want to fight. Yeah, yeah. Or just do what Ted Nugent did and shit yourself. Yeah, a lot of guys cut off their pinky toe. Yeah, and uh, our president had a doctor that his dad paid for, right, that he had bone spurs. Bone spurs. Yep. All over my body. It's all <laughs> just spurs everywhere. Yeah. Now, enlistment is uh, down in recent years, and the Army reportedly is totally fine granting waivers to felons they'd normally reject. So Jacob Wall, he might have a shot at fighting for the U.S. in Iran, and there goes my theory of being able to crime your way out of it. <laughs> so. I don't know. I feel like even with the like whole felony waiver thing, the loophole, they'd still be like, I don't know. This guy's kind of a fucking sociopath. Like, this guy's he's not going to take orders from anyone. And he's, he's like, be yeah, commander position. you're right. I won't take orders. That's why you make me a general. And yes. they're like, well, this kid's got moxie. Yeah. Uh, judging by how our other recent wars have gone, even if Jacob Wall spends five to ten years in prison, if we go to war anytime soon, we'll probably still be at war by the time he gets out. That's so, the great thing about it. They never yeah. end. They're yeah, we're never wars. not at war. <laughs> yeah. So, yes, we look forward to seeing Jacob Wall make his country proud if and when our conflict with Iran escalates into war. I mean, he does have moxie. We've got to give him that. And, uh, you know, that's what we need out there on that battlefield. Mm -hmm. Just weapons-grade moxie. Yeah. He's, a, he's, gonna, he's asymmetric warfare. He's going to go out there on, like, you know, he's going to be like, the Ayatollah has, like, uh, gay sex on Grinder, and, like, we got a witness right here. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to, like, slander them. That's how he, we win the war. The enemies get all red and blushy and yeah. just retreat. Yeah. Or they just can't stand him. Yeah. Yeah. 
But uh, yeah, most importantly, though, if you support a war and are able-bodied, you should be willing to go and fight that war. Otherwise, that's pretty disrespectful to the, uh, of the troops who do have to go fight in it. And, uh, you know, a lot of those troops, they only initially enlisted to get themselves out of poverty. Yeah. So, so I mean, you don't yeah. want to offend them. If you, you, if you support this, you should sign up. If you respect the troops like you say you do mm-hmm. and you are gunning for war, well, you should, uh, you should fight alongside those troops in yeah. that war or else you're kind of a hypocrite. You know who's stoked right now? The local dealerships right next to the... Oh, baby, so many <laughs> fucking Dodge Chargers Woo! are going to be coming off the lot. We got Mustangs in every color. Yeah. O- only $5,000 over asking price Uh huh. because you, you're next to a base. Look, I know you don't have any money, but you got, what, like $800, your, your enlistment bonus? That's all you got to put down here. The interest rate, it's only like 45%. You'll have this thing paid off in no time. By the yeah. time you're back, Yeah. will be fine. Anyways, moving on now to other news in the category of New Year, same old shit. We've got another pooper. Uh Uh-oh. This is a topic we, you know, just have to keep coming back to because the poop never stops. Mm -mm. There was, of course, the New Jersey school superintendent who was caught after repeatedly shitting on the grounds of a school outside of his district during his morning jogs. Then there was the Tim Hortons pooper who was denied access to the restroom and proceeded to shit on the floor and throw their shit at the employees. (laughs) Then there was the Australian executive caught on camera dropping a deuce outside. Then there was the Broadway pooper who shit on the floor at various New York audition spaces and remains at large to this day. Then there was wildly popular children's entertainer Blippi who took a big old diarrhea dump in his friend's naked doo-doo ass. (laughs) And uh, then most recently a guy in L.A. and another guy in Toronto just dumped buckets of hot diarrhea on random victims. And that's just the ones we've covered. There's been a lot of poopers. Yeah, well, the latest poop news luckily doesn't involve buckets. So there's that. Good. It's more of a throwback to a simpler, bygone era of poop. A school teacher in Wisconsin was caught having taken outdoor shits in a public park for over two years, and multiple times a week, and sometimes multiple times a day. This man gets his fiber. Yeah. What is it with fucking people that are attached to the education system and their needs to poop in public? I don't know. Do they not have, like, a teacher's bathroom at the school? Because maybe they don't want to go to the bathroom with the little kids. It'd be inappropriate to take a big old dump at school. Yeah, I guess. Maybe Maybe that's true. Probably not, though. Anyways, park services kept finding human shit in the park, walking distance from where the park's public restrooms were, and eventually they set up trail cams to catch the culprit on camera. And it worked. They managed to also catch his car and license plate on camera. After being caught by police, local reporters visited the park to get footage and found him there again. (laughs) Though it's unclear if he was there to take a shit or just return to the crime scene. Yeah. What are you doing here? Didn't you already get arrested for this? Yeah, I just, I, I, you know, I'm here I just for miss it so damn much. <laughs> <laughs> I know I can't do it. I just want to look at it. Yeah. That's my spot. Anyways, park park restrooms are uh, disgusting 99% of the time. So I don't, I don't blame them. Yeah, you do have to have strong quads to, like, levitate over the seat without touching. The whole bathroom is disgusting most yeah. of the time. Yeah. Toilet paper everywhere. It's like a Jackson Pollock. It's, it's truly disgusting. And you know what? You should be able to poop in nature. Yeah, Maybe but not bring a, a shovel place. and bury yeah, that yeah, shit. Yeah, you bury it and no one, has, no one can be around because yeah. then it's indecent exposure. But back to this guy. He is now retired in shame from his teaching job and he faces a fine of $6,000. So there you go. Poop. Poop never changes. What a way to go. I mean, yeah. he was, he's like 60-something, probably probably looking to retire soon already, but... Uh, I mean, I don't know about this. resigning in disgrace. I don't know about this park, but it, it is. Pooping in nature is, pe- is peaceful. I, I hiked uh, a bit of the Appalachian Trail yeah, in my youth. A cool breeze in the cheeks. It, it feels nice. You just lean up against the tree. Also, sitting on toilets, unnatural. Bad, you have to dig bad it. for the colon. You have to dig a hole and then you bury everything. And yeah. Then you're good to go. You don't just leave it there. Maybe burn it. No, don't. And make sure you know, you don't go off the trail too much. You'll get lost. You will. A lot, a lot of people get lost. Be taking a lot more shits out there. Mm-hmm. Now, another thing that never changes, in addition to poop, is the endless stream of stories about police in this country getting mad at fast food restaurants for insults, both real and imagined. Mm-hmm. Now, it's unclear why exactly it has to be national fucking news every time a cop thinks their food has been tampered with or gets called a pig on their receipt. But hopefully this latest story gets people to maybe wait for more information when these stories come up instead of just believing the police with no evidence. So, yeah, a cop in Kansas claimed last week to have gone to McDonald's for a coffee and found the words fucking pig written on the receipt attached to their cup. Oh, my God. Such disrespect for our boys in blue. This prompted his police chief to immediately go on Facebook to get those blue lives boomers fired up about this great injustice. 
calls to boycott McDonald's and demands that McDonald's fire the employees involved immediately started circulating. And the news media just ate this shit up. Like they always do. Why would the police lie about such a thing? <gasps> you mean the police lie? Except, How dare you? Except they did. Uh, yeah. The McDonald's franchise, they wisely decided to actually check their security footage before firing anybody. Smart. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it turned out the cop fucking lied. No employee had written fucking pig on the cup. The cop had done it himself. Yeah. Why? Well, probably because he knows that any time a cop goes to the media claiming a minimum wage food service employee was mean to them, it gets reported as fact, like, across the country and the world. Did he get for that some s- fucking reason. side order of attention that he ordered at McDonald's? <laughs> yeah. Sir, would you like to supersize this attention? Yes, also, I, I love this. This is a great reason. Like, they, they get so mad when, when they get refused service, even though that's happened, like, once. Yeah. But now there's a legit reason. Like, no, I'm not going to serve you. You're going to take my food and you're going to write something on it. You're going to try to get me fucking fired. It was also like the way it was written, too. Yeah, it was, it was huge. It's like, no, oh, it was, I just got home from the McDonald's. I didn't notice this until I got home. Well, the, it was like the actual writing was written as if it was on the thing. And then yeah. it was written, like, vertically the next time. Yeah, yeah it's fucking dumb. So, uh, yeah. Even now, after the police chief admitted that it was all bullshit and he did apologize and the cop resigned, uh, articles are still up on sites like Fox News and the Daily Mail with headlines like, Outrage after McDonald's employee scrawls vulgar comment on Army veteran police officer's (laughs) coffee cup. And Kansas police say officer got McDonald's coffee cup with vulgar message. Fucking pig. My favorite... Maybe uh, delete that. Yeah, I know. That would be the right thing to do. Or at least have updated on it and then... Well, some of them do, but it's like after the headline. Yeah. Okay. They, need to leave the, they le- need to leave the headline up because they know it's going to keep getting fucking Facebook shares for the next forever. Yeah. Because no favorite, one reads the articles. My favorite meme surrounding this was the uh, uh, cop visits local farm. Find spider has scrawled an <laughs> offensive message. It says some pig for the front yeah, the show. show. Yeah, that's good. That was good. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking fantastic. Anyways, this episode is sponsored by HelloFresh. Hello. Hello. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit delivery service, bringing you easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients right to your door. HelloFresh makes cooking at home fun, easy, and affordable. Break out of your dinner rut with 22-plus seasonal chef-curated recipes to choose from each week. There's something for everyone, including low-calorie, vegetarian, and family-friendly recipes each week. HelloFresh cuts out stressful meal planning and prepping so you can enjoy cooking and get dinner on the table in just about 30 minutes or even 20 minutes with their quick recipe options. Mm. And HelloFresh is flexible to fit your lifestyle. Add extra meals or lunches to your weekly order and easily change your delivery days or food preferences and skip a week whenever you need to. The great thing about HelloFresh is seeing how many different unique ways there are to cook familiar meals like burgers, tacos, pasta, you name it. Cooking and eating never gets boring with HelloFresh, and every box comes with a fun new challenge for the kitchen that's never too hard, even for beginners. HelloFresh now starts at just $5.66 per serving, but you can get an even better deal by going to HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird10 and using code WeeklyWeird10 during HelloFresh's New Year's sale. That'll get you 10 free meals, including free shipping. Again, that is 10 free meals with free shipping at HelloFresh.com slash WeeklyWeird10 and using the promo code WeeklyWeird10. So check out HelloFresh yeah. and uh, use that code. Yeah, now it's time for some headlines. And the, uh, some of these are a bit old from the last, like, two or three weeks. You know, yeah. a few that we missed the first time around and stuff while we were gone. But you were all sleeping or shopping or whatever. Yeah. You missed them, too. One thing you weren't doing was hibernating, mm-hmm. like these bur- the bears in the next story. Bears in Ukraine aren't hibernating because it's too warm. They've started suffering from insomnia. You don't want to be around an insomniac bear. No. 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 Very agitated. Very, very, very <laughs> agitated. Yeah. They are, they, they're going to take that anger out on the closest person to them. They're tired. They're probably hungry because everything else is either hibernating or dead because it's winter. Yeah. But it's still too warm for them. They are going to maul you. I don't want any part of this. You will die. Yeah. It's a good thing we killed off all the black bears or sorry, brown bears in uh, North America because mm-hmm. otherwise this would be a problem. <laughs> so good job, good job, uh, settlers. Yeah, there you go. Planning ahead. Ukraine needs to weaponize these bears against the Russians. Well, if you're not sleeping, you're fighting. I feel like they'd be Russian loyalists. The bear is—it's the Russian national animal, isn't it? That's California. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, they yeah, do but have the to California and Russia. What's the difference? Yeah, same In thing. In Russia, they drive the little cars. Those bears. Yeah. They're like circus bears. Yeah, well, and in Russia, they also have, like, roadside zoos, <laughs> like the highway, with just, like, sure. emaciated, abused bears, like, missing their fucking teeth. The Ukraine bears claws. need to go rescue them. Yeah. yeah. Bear squad. 
It's going to be a quick in and out operation. We're going to win this bear war in like three weeks. Yeah. Thank me later. Let the bears pay the bear tax. That's another thing. It's fucking, not to get back on the war talk, but all the same fucking people in 2003 who were all over the news being like, guys, this is a great idea. Trust me. We should definitely go to war with Iraq. We should definitely go to war with Iraq. It's going to be easy. It's going to be an easy war. We're going to get in, get out, no problem. Yeah. All those same fucking people who were wrong, fucking 16 years later, they're all... all still just rotating in and out of these shows. Yeah, this would be like, yeah, no, it's, yeah, this this is gonna be easy. Around, uh, it would be so easy. I love that all all this all of this proves that like you 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 would you would assume that you know people forget, and that's why other people are allowed to get away with things. But no. it's no people don't forget, or they aren't forgetting. It's just that the people in charge don't care that people nobody remember. cares. Nobody fucking cares. Yeah, I'm gonna do this again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm about to wreck this whole country's career. This is the problem. America, we fought World War II. It was a, it was a righteous, just war. We like actually were we, the fucking good guys in yeah, it. Yeah, we we, we've, <laughs> we've ridden that goodwill yeah. for almost 100 years. Yeah, now. I feel like at the 100-year mark, like 1945, 46, guys. you're not allowed to cite World War II as like... The aliens a, are going to take our guns away. Yeah, you can't, you can't claim to be a hero anymore. No. Because when that rolls around for the last 100 years, it'll all be just like fucking bullshit, like yeah, colonial. Just yeah. Like just... Boondoggles mm-hmm. all over the world. Yeah. Can't wait. Yeah. Just keep me alive till 2046. And I can. This is all, you know, this is all population tell people to shut control. the fuck up. The people in charge of the entire globe, they're just like, oh, population's getting a little high. How about a war with Iran? <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Well, we got off track here. Well, let's go back to headlines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Colorado Springs man reportedly robs bank, throws money into the air, and yells, Merry Christmas. And he looked a little bit like Santa Claus, too. Wow. Was he wearing a, a disguise to look like Santa Claus? Was no. That part he's, of plan? he's just like a kind of kind of like tubby, uh, bearded, white-haired yeah. Colorado mountain man. Did he throw the money in the air in the bank? Or did he no. spread it around in the community outside? He, he literally went outside, went next door to Starbucks, and just threw like a couple thousand dollars into the street, being like, ha, ha, ho, Merry Christmas. Cool. And then he just waited there to be arrested, and the police showed up, and they're like, Sir, did you rob the bank? He's like, yes, I did. Of course I did. <laughs> but his, his partner was the one in Starbucks scooping up all the money. That's how you get away with it. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, it's kind of like money laundering. Mm-hmm. The old Santa trick. Yeah. It's like, okay, you're not going to get all the money that I stole from the bank sure. for us. Sure. But you're going to get some of it. Whatever you pay you can... a small tax. Yeah, the Starbucks tax. Yeah, the Starbucks tax. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, I bet they served that guy a coffee and they, <laughs> they didn't write fucking pig on it. No. They say wrote hero on his cup I heard. <laughs> I mean, he is a hero. Yeah. Remember when that happened in LA where the, the guy was just driving around in the car throwing Oh my God, it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, we watched that for like two hours <laughs> straight on yeah. live streaming. The bank robber, they knew, they're like, yeah, we're fucked. We're, once, once you're on camera brought, like in a police chase in LA, yeah. you're fucked. Yeah. So they, they were just like, look, either we get caught and we give the money back or we start throwing it around we, the neighborhood. Yeah. And you know, Small chance, but it creates enough of a diversion that we can escape. Yeah, dude, it, people were running. It, like, did, it caused chaos. Running. The police yeah. were like, get out of the road. And people were like, fuck nope. you. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> ah, no respect. Yeah, it was yeah. great. I'm, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> and the guy's doing donuts in Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> yeah. We we love our car chases out we here. We do. We, it also, we love our car chases, don't we, folks? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves them. We're gonna do. We're gonna do more this year. Uh, it's also it's the worst thing for productivity in Los Angeles. Like, cause there's car chases multiple times a week, and every time there's a car chase in any office setting, all it takes is the one person finding out about it. Go to kcal9.com. <laughs> yeah, and the whole office shuts down. It's terrible. Yeah, it's great. Uh, anyways, moving on. Underage Michigan men arrested after drunken horse and buggy ride. <laughs> the real story here is the mug shots. Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, I couldn't, couldn't find any articles actually explicitly saying that these men are Amish. Hmm. But um, all four of these guys, none of them are related. They are not, they, they don't have the same last name. Mm-hmm. They all look like they may have uh, a few of the same chromosomes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that a trait of the Amish? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's a sort of isolated group. Are they Amish group. or are they Mennonites? Well, one of those, you know, one of those groups. I think, I think Amish. Okay. What's the difference? To be honest, I don't quite know. They're both like German tribes that, or German like religious groups that came over here and they're like, we're going to change nothing. See you later. Yeah. All I uh, know is uh, my hometown has a huge population of them because that's where they all went for Rumspringa. Yeah, the Florida Amish. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. Way they make better. great furniture. Yeah. K- 
can't well, they, beat it. These guys sound like they were having a great time. Uh-huh. I mean, they have terrible haircuts, but they were they were fucking wasted, underage, riding around on a horse. It's the horse and buggy is the first true autonomous vehicle. Yeah, you don't need to be sober. Just let the like, horse do the work. Let the horse do the work. Once it knows where it's going, it's especially on like it doesn't sound like this is a very crowded part of Michigan. No, it's like here's the thing. Was the horse drunk? I don't know. <laughs> but if the horse isn't drunk, I think this is fine. It'd be pretty hard to get a horse drunk. Because even if you're drunk and like trying to tell the horse what to do, like it's gonna be ah oh, fucking guy's drunk again. If the horse is experienced enough, the horse is gonna ignore the bad advice, bad drunk advice. Yeah. Like I don't think so. Horses, Let me take the wheel. Horses going their own way. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it's uh, that's a that's a cool crime. Yeah. Cool crime. Yeah. Like, even if you hit someone, what's going to happen? Oh, no. Yeah, well, you wouldn't hit someone because the, no, the horse isn't going to stop. Yeah. The horse isn't going to run into another car. The horse is going to avoid the other car because the horse is an autonomous vehicle. <laughs> 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 yeah. Go to bed, Elon Musk. We already have Elon's self-driving gonna, vehicles. The Tesla truck. Did anyone look inside of it? Is there a fucking horse inside the truck <laughs> <laughs> operating? This, this truck is 10 horsepower. <laughs> There's a bunch of ponies inside of it. No, that, that whole it's a horse part. brain in the yeah. Edge. <laughs> the, the back part that slides up. That's where you stand to yeah. guide the horse. <laughs> we need to build horse tunnels. It's the only way we're going to solve just this. Going tunnel. back 150 years for it's, no fucking reason. If everyone was on horses, everything would be fine. Well, that's the thing. Like, but the whole reason we stopped doing horses is because like New York City streets were covered in like three feet <laughs> of shit. <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, awful. There's got to be another way. <laughs> oh, exhaust. There's the ticket. Yeah, there's yeah. too much shit. Uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> more news. Yeah. Kentucky woman busted using dog urine to pass drug tests. It was worth a shot, I guess. Pretty Seems pretty easy to collect because dogs are very particular about where they piss. So if you just put a, a jar under there. Yeah, especially if it's a boy dog. You, yeah. you can actually do it with a jar. Girl dog, not A little so bit much. harder. They a go where they're they, they, yeah. Uncivilized. Hard to catch. But uh, yeah, doesn't really work. They're gonna, they're gonna know. But yeah, piss is piss, but not. It's not dog yeah. piss. Different kind of piss. So if you're on parole like this lady, better to just not do the drugs. Yeah, I guess. Or get or, human piss. Yeah, that's the thing. You can, uh, and if you're gonna take someone else's piss, make sure they give you their piss that they did in the morning, early morning piss. And then you have to the you, thickest concentration. Then you have to uh, put it like. It down, well, you're going to have to hide it anyway, but you, you want it to have skin contact so that it maintains the, the, the heat, yeah. the body heat. Well, if you're a woman, you can... No, oh, there's other ways. It's a lot easier. You can... Yeah, you just uh, jam it up there and then pop it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So there are ways. No one's going to say a damn thing. We don't know. She might have done that with this one. Pop! No. They might have watched her do it. Why does your piss, instead of a stream, just go... Vroom! Or she had a tiny little dog... In her pants. No, that's not what happened. She's like, all right, well. Just holds it up. Any minute now, it's coming up. This t- this dog's on crack cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, speaking of piss, Antiques Roadshow expert drinks urine thinking it's 150-year-old wine. Damn, that's good. <laughs> this was, uh, these grapes were obviously grown on the south side of the hill in, uh, in Chardonnay, France. Yeah. It was like, it wasn't, it was like piss, rusty nails, and some hair. <laughs> Just like... <laughs> It's like, like a, a scene from Dumb and Dumb. A troll bottle. Like Get some, the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah. Like it's like someone 150 years ago. Well, they, it was actually like they put it, it was like an old thing where you just like piss in a bottle and like bury it somewhere in your property to <laughs> make ghosts run away. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, it's also like I like to think they're like some, some fucking rich asshole is going to buy this house 150 years from now. They're going to look around the place for antiques. Mm. <laughs> glug, glug, so glug. I'm going to piss in this fancy wine bottle. So some... Dickhead on the, the TV drinks it in front of everyone. Oh. Drinks my old ass piss. Well, they probably thought it was like some kind of healing salve back then. Was yeah. A I couple of rusty nails, some piss, some moss. They, they weren't too smart. Yeah. I mean, it, it does get rid of athletes, but you could piss all over your feet. That's, that, that is true. Yeah. But also, <laughs> the, the thing in your piss that kills athlete's foot is well, how the was same it, chemical in athlete's foot. What? Uh, how cream. was it? How was the wine? Did he say? He said it was bad. He said it was like uh, taste. I mean, well, it wasn't wine. It was I assume bad. like wine, all wine, uh, including real wine from 150 years ago, <laughs> probably tastes terrible. It's just vinegar at that point. Yeah. Yeah. So it's probably what the piss was. I mean, probably not that different. But uh, Gross. Yeah. Is there a video of this? 
Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm gonna watch. He did it. He drank the piss like four years ago, and then finally they did like a follow up episode recently where they're like, so we sent the bottle to like the fucking Royal Society of chemistry or something and they did a detailed analysis of it and they're like yeah it was just piss oh I would love it it'd be even better if it was just a prank like yeah. they're like these fucking antiques roadshow people yeah. I'm so sick and tired of them yeah so it's a good way to discredit anyone yeah affiliated with wine you just make them drink piss how funny it would be if we told them he drank piss yeah um, cool well he'll have to take a shower after that mm-hmm. moving on Florida police searching for criminal toe sucker Broke into a person's house and sucked their toes. In Bradenton. Yeah. Just Bradenton north. is like, I think, the most the, the most Florida man city in Florida. I feel like we've gotten more stories uh, from Bradenton than anywhere else. next door to it, uh, I can agree with that. Everyone uh, in Sarasota where I grew up fucking hates it. It's, uh, yes. Uh, Things happen there. It is. An uh, interesting place. Yeah. But yeah, this person, he, some dude woke up. There was a man in his room sucking on his toes. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like... I'm sucking on toes. <laughs> and then he, like, beat the shit out of the toe sucker guy. He, like, chased him out of the house. The toe sucker guy was, like, apparently still trying to grab his, like, yeah, dick. Those toes. He's, <laughs> he's grabbing at his dick while just getting, like, punched yeah. repeatedly in the face. And then he somehow made it out. Yeah. So this toe sucker still on the loose. Yeah. In the streets of Bradenton. Be Watch out. Lock your doors. Yeah. Florida man is on the loose. Yeah. Speaking of Florida... Pro golfer arrested in Florida prostitution sting called Operation Santa's Naughty List. At this point, at this point, if you're going to get a prostitute, don't do it in Florida. Don't go to Florida massage parlors. Yeah. Don't go. They love it. Don't pick up prostitutes in Florida. Don't do it. They're doing like a prostitution sting every week just so they can put it in those weird gas station magazines. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha magazine. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just leave. leave I thought I brought you back one of those once when I went there. No, I I still haven't seen one. Every gas station in Florida has it. It's called Gotcha. So fucked up. Yeah, I I know. (laughs) Should be should be unconstitutional. I when is Gotcha going to go to the Supreme Court? I have friends way way younger uh, that had gotten arrested and were in there and like had it framed. framed Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like if it's a small crime and you're You're like trespassing or something, yeah, friends was in there for. But uh, yeah, you get put. Your fucking face gets put. In a magazine, regardless of whether you actually committed the crime or not, just being accused of it, they're like, "Here he is." Yeah. <laughs> uh, Fucked up. Well, yeah. If it's a pro golfer, though, it's like, why aren't these people just going to uh, N- yeah. Nevada? I think they would have connections. A lot of golf out here. It's a great time of year to go golfing. You know, out in the desert. Yeah. Uh, I was I was just in Palm Springs. The grass well, naturally growing. I'm saying specifically, not in California, Cal- Elliot. I don't. I know. I don't know if you are aware of this or not, but prostitution is illegal here in California. No, but I'm saying just like the desert in general. Like this is the one time of year where I'm sure the the Vegas courses are getting a little bit of help, but they're probably growing more naturally than they do at any other time of the year. Sure, they're getting some moisture. So go get your prostitutes where it's nice and legal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nevada. Yes, but enough. Florida man, it's time for Georgia man. Georgia man, Georgia man arrested for watching porn, touching himself at Applebee's restaurant. The yep. your neighborhood bar and grill. Sounds like Georgia man. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what it is. He, yeah. Well, they put those tablets on the table. What am I supposed to not yeah. watch porn on them? I I, uh, so I associate uh, tablet screens with uh, pornography. Yeah. It's just a natural association. Yeah. So if I'm sitting in an Applebee's, and I'm like, hello, I'd like to order something. They're just like, just use the tablet, Shug. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, God. It just sets off. You know, it gets, gets the blood pumping Wouldn't in all the Wouldn't it be funny right if places. I put pornography on here? Yeah. yeah. I think he brought his own, though. But I, um, I do like those, especially at a place like Applebee's. Like, I, the, the tablet's fine. I'll order. Don't even come over. Mm. Just bring the food out. It's all right. The, the one thing I really do like <laughs> about it is... They're clearly trying to automate humans out of the job, though. Sure, but the one thing I actually do like about it is uh, for paying the bill. Like, oh, it's good for that. Yeah. It always seems like the hardest part is getting the bill. Yeah, yeah the, the... Especially in Europe. Uh. In Europe, like, the culture is different, so people actually sit and talk to each other after they're done eating. In, yeah. in America, you're you like, shovel... I'm trying to get the fuck out of here. You eat so much food in America when you're dining that you immediately just have to go home and go to sleep. Yeah. I gotta take a shit. I'm not gonna do it here. You don't want me doing it here. I need to get home. <laughs> yeah. Now. But in Europe, they're like, after you're done eating, it's like, I'm not gonna bother this table for mm-hmm. like 30 minutes so they can yeah. enjoy their time together. And I'm just waving them down. Yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I need to leave. <laughs> No, sir, you do not leave. No, have a good time with you your friends. You want some dessert? <laughs> you want a cigarette? Yeah. 
Your after after dinner coffee and dessert. Would you like a tiny shot glass full of olive oil? <laughs> they love talking over there and they hanging do. out with their friends. They love to gab. Uh, so yeah, but anyways, this is an American problem. You put tablets everywhere and people start jerking off to them. Yeah, it's going to happen. It happens. School Division apologizes after Christmas concert deemed anti-oil. <laughs> What was the... What Santa's was, a goddamn communist. What was the ca- Christmas concert? Uh, this was in Canada, actually. It sounds like an American wow. headline, but it was, a, it was a Canadian town, and I guess this town has a lot of oil yeah. uh, wells or whatever. Yeah. And it was like, Santa goes green was the theme this year. And all the parents are like, this damn school and their damn Santa's trying to make me lose my job down at the oil rig. They're like, no, we're just saying like They're solar panels these, are good. These kids are learning that the, the, the things are powered by magic. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, you always... Rain, hey, reindeer, fucking uh, very fuel efficient. Yeah. Auto- automated, automated driving. Yeah. And Class uh, yeah. five automated vehicle. Yeah, reindeer. no emissions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of emissions. Yeah, they fart. They, they shit everywhere, too. Yeah. But when they shit, the deer shit's like little sprinkles. When it falls down from the sky, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to ruin your day if you yeah. get what, well, by one little pebble. It might. It might. I don't know. Uh, Sharon Osborne says she forced an assistant to enter a burning house to retrieve artwork and then fired him. And, and this she was, says this in a joking sense. Yeah, too. this was weird. This was on this British show, Would I Lie to You, where you tell a story and then at the end you say whether it was true. She told the story and then at the end she's like, it's true. I am a fucking monster. And everyone clapped. Yeah, it was surreal. But yeah, she, uh, their, the Osborne house in, I think, L.A. was like on fire a few years ago. She like, her assistant was like getting stuff out of the house, like fucking suffering from smoke inhalation. She says the, the paramedic showed up, put an oxygen mask on him, and then she ripped the mask off. She's like, no, you get back in there and you get more of my stuff out. No. And he did. And then the next day, like, she, she's just like, well, that was funny, wasn't it? Ha <laughs> ha. And the assistant was like, I didn't think it was very funny. And she's like, well, here's something that's funny. You're, You're fired. fired. <laughs> Woo! What the fuck? Yeah. Very weird. Weird, uh, like, not only is it horrible, but it's just weird, like, yeah, I'm going to tell this story. People are going to think it's hilarious. Yeah, what a fun anecdote. What a fun anecdote. <laughs> oh. Hilarious. A guitar made entirely of cocaine intercepted at Cancun Airport. Uh, was Cream going to play? I don't know. This one is, <laughs> the, the, this, I've only managed to find this headline on some, like, kind of shady looking websites, but. It's believable, It's, though. like, a, it's in the Mexican news. It's in Spanish language uh, yeah. news. So this is true. I'm just not sure the guitar was actually made entirely of cocaine. Yeah. Because that would be fucking cool. But uh, Probably all the insides. Yeah, probably had them in compartments or something. But I like the idea of just, like, getting out the duct tape Chips, and, like, and chipping, just, just yeah. you know, it takes artistry to actually form uh, a powdery substance yeah. in plastic into the shape of a rigid guitar and then take it to the airport. I'm like, yeah, it's... Uh, one of those, it's, it's just a guitar. It's a sand guitar. It's made out of sand. Don't look too closely at it. No. Mike Bloomberg exploited prison labor to make 2020 presidential campaign phone calls. Very cool, Mike. Yeah, he didn't know about it. I didn't know this was even a thing. Like, I knew we were... Prison call centers? I did not know that was a thing. I, I thought knew they had a stamp license plate. No, no. They've expanded the uh, prison slave labor industry yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. So it's like the Bloomberg campaign, they didn't know about it. They hired, But they hired a company who contracts with a call center company who's like most of their employees are prisoners. So it's like super fucked up. Like they, they, they pay a living wage, like they pay minimum wage. But the minimum wage all goes in bulk to the jail. And then the jail pays each person like five cents, cents an yeah, hour. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fucking, uh, it's slavery. And yep. uh, yeah, I don't know. If I was running for president, I'd probably want my staff to be a little more vigilant about not, more, A little more not, oversight, yeah. too, in general. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It seems like something you should be aware of and actively avoiding. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now, next time I get stuck on a robocall, or not a robocall, like an actual call, I'll be like, hey, just, just quick question. Level with me. Quick question. Are you in prison right now? You should get out. You should get out. You should break out. Yeah, that's just fucking weird, like, not knowing if the person calling you. Like, you already don't know, like, what country they're yeah, calling you from. I, like, you, don't, you don't know if they're in fucking prison? I don't answer any phone call I don't know, and yeah, I don't I mean, answer most phone calls I do know. Yeah, they should just disable the... <laughs> Phones should be disabled. Yeah, like, I, the iPhone, like, 14 is going to have no voice calling. Good. It's going to be great. I'll finally make the switch. This is what Steve Jobs wanted. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. 
Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. Please check out our most recent episode of Tech News Day right over there. And uh, Weekly Weird's Worst of the Year. Check that out as well. We'll be back uh, next week with a brand new podcast. So head to the Patreon if you yeah. want to check that out. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Take care. <laughs>